You often hear it said that Christianity and science is an either or choice. Either you're a serious scientist or you're a Christian and you can't be both. And I want to say there are just too many both ands. And just after I became a Christian in Cambridge, I went to church in Cambridge and sat next to in church the professor of geophysics at the university. Now people say you can't believe in, um, in Jesus because of geology, but Professor Bob White knows more about geology than most people on the planet and he seems to find no difficulty. Or the same year that Richard Dawkins published The God Delusion, Francis Collins, the director of the Human Genome Project, published his book The Language of God, in which he explains his belief in Jesus Christ. There are too many both ands. I want to suggest that the real conflict isn't between science and Christianity at all. Of course there is a conflict, we know that just by listening to the radio and the debates that rage. I want to suggest that the conflict though really is between two different philosophies, two different worldviews. If I was going to be provocative I'd say between two different religions because at points the atheist camp can sound quite religious and proselytising in its approach. There is a conflict between the worldview of the Bible and the worldview known as naturalism. Naturalism is the philosophy that says that matter and chance is all that there is. So in the words of the cosmologist Carl Sagan, the cosmos is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. Really? And cosmology proves that how? You see, that isn't a scientific statement at all, it's a mere assertion by Sagan of his own particular belief. Uh, or take my own field of neuroscience, uh, Sir Francis Crick, the Nobel Laureate, he once said that you your joys and your sorrows, your memories and your ambitions, your sense of personal identity and free will are in fact no more than the behaviour of a vast assembly of nerve cells and their associated molecules. Well, as a Christian, I, I believe that our thoughts are somehow bound up with our, our nerve cells and our brains and the molecules associated with them. But I disagree with Crick that we are no more than that. And actually there's nothing in neuroscience that would tell him that we are only that or reducibly that. That is simply his assertion, his belief. What should a scientist do when faced with different philosophical claims? There is a God, there's no God. What should a scientist do? He should step back and look at the evidence and be prepared to follow it where it leads. Did Jesus walk on water? Did Jesus rise from the dead? If he did, then naturalism has got to go and Christianity is the truth consistent with what science has observed.